फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम द फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ पेयर ऑफ ओवरीज अ पेयर ऑफ ओविडक्ट फेलोपियन ट्यूब्स यूट्रस वजाइना एक्सटर्नल जेनेटेलिया एंड अ पेयर ऑफ मेमोरी ग्लैंड ovaries are the primary sex organ of a female they are solid structures located in the lower part of the abdomen it is connected by ligaments to the uterus and lateral pelvic wall each ovary is 2 to 4 cm long and 2 cm wide it is composed of connective tissue called stroma covered by a layer of germinal epithelium stroma has an outer cortex and an inner medulla the ovarian cortex contains some rounded bodies named follicles at various stages of development each follicle contains an ovum fallopian tubes or oviducts are narrow tubes about 10 to 12 cm long connecting the ovary to the uterus each oviduct is differentiated into three parts infundibulum ampulla and isthmus infundibulum is the funnel shaped proximal part and has finger like projections called fimbriae at its margin fimbriae are very close to the ovaries and receive the egg release from the ovaries ampulla is the wider part of the oviduct next to infundibulum it is lined by ciliated epithelium isthmus is the short narrow and straight part that follows the ampulla and connects with the uterus Uterus is a hollow muscular and inverted pear-shaped structure. It is also known as the womb. It is located in the pelvic cavity between the urinary bladder and the rectum. The uterus is attached to the body wall by a double fold of peritoneum called mesometrium. It has an upper dome-shaped part fundus, middle large part corpus and a narrow part cervix. that projects into the vagina implantation of embryo occurs in the uterine fundus it is the site of fetal growth during pregnancy the cervix is composed of powerful sphincter muscles it is strong enough to hold the weight of the fetus and amniotic fluid against the pull of gravity during pregnancy the cavity of the cervix is called the cervical canal The uterus has a thick wall made of three tissues: an outer peritoneal covering called perimetrium, a middle layer of smooth muscles, myometrium, and an inner glandular layer, endometrium. The myometrium is involved in uterine contractions. The endometrium undergoes cyclic changes during the menstrual cycle. Vagina is an elastic muscular tube about 7.5 meter long that connects the cervix of the uterus to the exterior of the body by the vaginal opening the cervical canal along with vagina forms the birth canal during menstruation the menstrual flow exits the body via the vagina vulva is the collective name of female external genitalia located in the pubic region of the body it includes vestibule mons pubis labia majora labia minora clitoris and hymen vestibules is a small depression in front of the anus into which the urethra and vagina open separately mons pubis is a cushion of fatty tissue on either side of the vestibule covered by skin and pubic hair the labia majora is the interior portion of the mons pubis which is split into right and left halves it is homologous of the scrotum the labia minora are a pair of hairless fleshy folds of tissue inner to the labia majora that surrounds the vaginal opening the clitoris is a small solid erectile organ that lies at the anterior junction of labia minora this is homologous to the penis the vaginal opening is covered partially by a membrane called hymen a slit in the hymen allows menstrual flow to pass out of the vagina A birth of Bartholin's gland is seen on each side of the vaginal opening. Their ducts open just outside the hymen. During sexual excitement, these glands produce a viscous fluid that serves as a lubricant during copulation. Mammary glands. Mammary glands are a part of external organs of the female. 
they're commonly called as breasts. The main function of mammary gland is secretion of milk to nurture baby. These are modified sweat glands and remain undeveloped till puberty. At puberty, they start developing under the influence of estrogen and progesterone hormones. The external surface of each breast has a projection called the nipple. Each nipple is surrounded by a circular pigmented area called the areola. Internally, the breasts consist of glandular tissue forming mammary glands, fibrous tissue and fatty or adipose tissue. In each breast, the mammary glands are divided into about 15 to 20 compartments called mammary lobes. Each lobe is made up of a number of lobules. Each lobule is composed of grape-like clusters of milk-secreting glands termed alveoli. When a baby sucks the nipple, milk is produced in the alveoli. Milk passes from the alveoli into the mammary tubules and then into the mammary duct. Several mammary ducts join to form a wider part, the mammary ampulla, lactiferous sinuses, where milk may be stored before going to the lactiferous ducts. Each lactiferous duct carries milk to the nipple. The ejection of milk is stimulated by the hormone oxytocin. A nursing woman can secrete 1 to 2 liters of milk per day. Oogenesis The process of formation of a mature female gamete, the ovum, is called oogenesis. This process is initiated during the embryonic development stage. Oogenesis consists of three phases. Multiplication phase, growth phase and maturation phase. During multiplication phase, the cells of germinal epithelium of fetal ovary undergo mitotic division producing undifferentiated diploid cells called oogonia, gamete mother cells. Some of these cells grow and becomes the primary oocyte which is diploid. Meiosis begins in the primary oocytes soon after their formation, but the division process gets arrested and oocyte remains in the meiotic prophase 1 stage. Each primary oocyte then gets surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells which are derived from the germinal epithelium lining the ovary. The structure thus formed is called the primary follicle. With the onset of puberty, the primary oocyte becomes larger in size. More layers of granulosa cells surround the primary follicle and a layer or theca is formed around it. Such a structure is called secondary follicle. Each secondary follicle then develops a fluid-filled cavity termed antrum inside it. The theca around the diploid primary oocyte divides into inner theca and outer theca. Thus a secondary follicle transforms into a tertiary follicle. The fully grown primary oocyte inside the tertiary follicle completes its first meiotic division and produces two haploid daughter cells. The larger cell is known as the secondary oocyte or ovum. The other cell is extremely small and called as the first polar body. Both the cells have haploid number of chromosomes. The secondary oocyte develops a membrane, zona pellucida, around it. Thus, the tertiary follicle becomes a mature graphian follicle. The graphian follicle ruptures and releases the secondary oocyte or ovum by a process called ovulation. The second meiotic division of the secondary oocyte or ovum occurs only at the time of fertilization in the fallopian tube of the female. During fertilization, the secondary oocyte unequally divides its cytoplasm which results in production of a large haploid cell, the ooted with a large quantity of cytoplasm and a very small haploid cell, the second polar body. At the same time, the first polar body also divides into two polar bodies. Thus, a primary oocyte forms one haploid ooted and three haploid polar bodies.